come in here. Grandma is almost here. I'm coming, Mom. <laughs> Whoops. Oh, be careful. I just mopped. You know what Grandma always says. Yeah. A, a clean, clean house is a clean, clean heart. heart. <laughs> That's right. And we want to make sure Grandma is happy on her birthday. Her dream was always to make it to 100 years, so she lived a very peaceful and risk-free life. Mm -hmm. And tomorrow morning is the big day. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Be careful, kids. Not too loud. You don't want to scare her. <laughs> we have a surprise for Grandma, too. Oh, well, yeah. You told us all the stories about the really cool things Grandma has mm -hmm. done in her, like, 1,000 years. Mm -hmm. So so we set up a walk down mem memory lane yeah. for her Grandma as, as, soon, as soon as she gets here. <laughs> That is the sweetest, but I don't think I've talked too much about Grandma's past. Oh, no, no, yeah, yeah, just, just the other day, you talked about how she was a really good gymnast and an ice skater as a child. And about her job while she was in college, mm -hmm. where she worked as a log roller and fought bulls on a farm. Yeah, yeah, then she tamed poisonous snakes at the zoo and was an elect electrical power line installer. <laughs> Kids, that wasn't your Grandma Smith. Hmm? That, that was my mom, Granny Harrington. You never met her because of a free solo ice climbing accident right after I was born. Oh. Oh, they're here. Oh, no. So, what is this walkthrough that you set up? Um, do you um, need some help getting out of the car? We, uh, we, we put a gymnastic springboard at the end of the walkway. No, I'm fine. Oh. Mom, are you? Oh, gosh. Let me catch you. Gotcha. Uh, I'm fine, I'm uh, fine. Then we covered the walk in ice so she could skate. <laughs> Mom! Oh, oh, I, I, I'm steady. Yeah, then, then we put a box of poisonous snakes by the mailbox. Mm -hmm. Did you check your mail today? Ah, get back! Back! Hit it! I'm trying! Use it's your trying. cane! Hit it harder! I'm trying! There. I think we got them. Ah! There's one more! Um, and we put an electric wire in front of the door. Oh, honey, you can't be leaving these wires out. <laughs> ah! Shut it off! Shut it off! <laughs> Ow. Okay, it's off. That's it, right? Yeah, yeah, that's that. Except for the logs. And the bull. Mm. Watch the logs! Duck! Mm, where did you get cows? That's a bull! Go! Go, Ragma! But that's it, that's it. That's Kids, we are going to have to have a talk after this. Yes, ma'am. <gasps> Grandma! Well, look at who it is. I thought I wasn't going to make it to my birthday in one piece. <laughs> Wow, this is a shiny floor. I just waxed. Oh, let me take a step. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. Ow. Grandma? Grandma? Yeah. Mom, huh? what did you do? I'm okay. We're listening to the radio station where the hosts are Turn your radio on. Music in the air. Turn your radio on. It's a nice chair. It's a down low. And it's to the user's radio. Turn your radio on. Well, hello, everyone. And welcome to a live broadcast of the Main Street Music Show here at Sonicon in Lynchburg, Virginia. We got a pretty good show for you tonight. We have our acting company, the Main Street Players, have flown in to be with us, Jamie Cloutier and Daniel Cross, with our special guests, Kara O'Brien and Sam Van Fossen, who are joining us as well. We have a live band tonight as well. Roundabout is going to be with us to play a few tunes for us. And today's show is brought to you by the Dog Owners Guild, Baby Boober Tuner, and Baby Boober Tuners. So stick around and enjoy the show.
Well, thank you guys very much for, for having us here at uh, SonicCon. We, uh, we got to play After Adventures in Odyssey, and uh, we broke Grandma's back <laughs> right after that. A funny story, though, I actually applied for a job and got an interview with Adventures in Odyssey a few years back. Uh, and I got an interview, I sent them some of my work, and they never called back after that. And I started the Main Street Music Show <laughs> afterwards, and I think it was a good fit for both of us. So. <laughs> but it was cool to be, be here after them. So what, do we, what, do we, what can we expect tonight? We're going to have some sketches. Yeah, some sketches. We'll have a little bit of music. Yeah. We have some sound effects, some we'll live sound effects tonight. And let's try the sound effects really quickly. All right. Uh, crickets. You, want you guys want to hear crickets? Mm -hmm. Sure. Yes. Okay. Um, if you've heard of the Main Street Music Show before this weekend, let us know. Okay, well, some crickets out there. Yeah, a just a few just, crickets just a out there. Crickets. Just yeah. mostly, yeah. But if you haven't heard the show, hopefully you guys have a good time. Uh, but we do need to pay the bills. So we have our sponsors, and our first sponsor for tonight that sponsors the first portion of this show is Pete's Delete the Meat Feast. Are you a vegetarian but still crave that savory tense uh, taste of meat? Then you need to come on down to Pete's, Pete's Delete, Delete the, the Meat, meat Feast. Feast. We have a full selection of meats made from vegetables but taste exactly like the real thing. You're going to love our steak made from soybeans, molasses, and coconut tree bark. Or our roasted chicken containing dragon fruit stems, crushed avocado skins, peat moss, pine needles, and powdered sediment rocks to give it that roasted chicken flavor. And for you real vegetarian meat eaters, we have our Carolina, Carolina Not, Not Barbecue. One bite and you be saying to yourself, wow, this really tastes like barbecue and not celery seeds, banana peels, Venus flytrap tentacles, year old fast food curly fries, broken minor league baseball bats, and wheat. Just so we don't leave out your meat eaters, we have a great supply of meat lover salad where the lettuce is made from finely ground bacon which is dyed green and pressed into the shape of real romaine lettuce. Wow, these look like tomatoes, Ooh. but they are actually just hand-shaped rounds of raw ground beef. And the croutons. Well, that's a secret family recipe that has been passed down by Pete's great-great-grandmother Marguerite, the most famous skunk farmer this side of the Mississippi. And finally, for you omnivores, we can mix up a meal for you with a nice and juicy Delete, delete the, the Meat Steak. steak. Complete with a Side salad of bacon pressed lettuce, venison carrots, ox cucumbers, and a ranch dressing that you can't believe is 100% man of war jellyfish. jellyfish. Ooh, spicy. And for those of you who don't believe in hurting plants or animals, we have a pile of rocks. So, come on down to Pete's Delete the Meat Feast. We have outdoor seating right next to our farm where you can literally watch your free range salad grazing. FDA approval pending, but, but highly, highly unlikely. unlikely. Disclaimer, none of Marguerite's famous skunks were harmed in the making of this food for the most part. Minor big baseball bats may be collected from stadiums containing tree nuts. We only select sterile Venus flytraps. Man of War jellyfish hot sauce has been known to cause numbness of the palate, partial paralysis in the extremities, and in extreme cases, bad decision making at Walmart. Bon appetit! Dr. Gunderson? Yeah, Mary? The Jingle Doodles are here. Should I send them in? Dr. Gunderson, can we come in? Oh, uh, yeah, come in and have a seat. Oh, sorry, we're late. Someone forgot to charge the test uh, last night. I did night. not forget. All right, the charger cable froze, and when I had to try to strain it out, it cracked. Uh, Tesla has not taken into account that it's 63 degrees below zero up here in the North Pole. Oh, I haven't seen you two since the incident at Santa's workshop escape oh, room debacle. Yeah. Well, Rudolph is finally talking to us again, so that's good. He's sensitive. Mm. You know, I mean, things really have been much better up here since Santa opened the Santa's Serenity and Counseling Center and brought you on board. Well, I appreciate your kind words. Now, what brings the two of you in? Well, things haven't been too good around the Jingle Doodle household. Oh, Trixie. Well, they haven't. What? Tinker has been spending a lot more time with his bowling buddies, the Peppermint Posse, than he has with I, his own no, wife. No, I, I have not. You have too. You're at Frosty Lanes three nights a week and then out fishing and drinking eggnog Mondays and Wednesdays. And Sundays you're watching the NFL. Their National Football League? No, no, it's the Narwhal Fighting League. It's kind of like MMA, but better. 
You, you have every Friday night to spend together, but, but you'd rather knit with Ginger Snap, Sparkles, and, and Peppermint Pam. Tinker Jingle Doodle, I have been meeting with the Icy Stitcher Society on Friday nights for 137 years. Oh. You purposely don't have anything Friday just to hold it against no, me. I do not. You do too. Do not. Yes, you do. Uh, no, I don't. Okay, do that okay, too. enough! Now, what about your baby daughter, Twinkle Toes? Oh, that's another thing. <sighs> Tinker, really? Where is this coming from? Well, well Trixie decided to have a, a full-time babysitter, so Sugar Plum has moved in. And Sugar Plum is? Her mother. You said that having another child would be a huge commitment. It is. And since Bob just retired after running the North Pole Nursery for the past 230 years, I figured she was capable. I never said she wasn't capable. You don't like my mother. I do. Like your mother? She's, she's good with our little twinkle toes, but she turns her nose up at my fun shop fudge sticks blitz brownies. Look, I interned with the Keeblers for 10 straight summers. I know how to bake a brownie. Thank you very much. Well, they were a little rich. <gasps> Trixie. How dare you? Mom might be right. Oh my jingle bells, you are you're you're you are becoming your mother. <gasps> how dare you? Dear My dear. worst nightmare is coming true Just here. Just settle down. I, Trixie is not becoming Sugar Plum. She is her own elf woman. And it's okay that she doesn't like your brownies. That doesn't mean she doesn't like you. Well. Mother-in-laws can stain a relationship. But I sense there is something deeper. No, no, we, we, we just told you everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you sure there isn't anything else happening in your life? No, everything's fine. Mm -hmm. What about your child, Twinkle? Oh. Is he still an elf on the shelf? He <laughs> <laughs> got married. Is this not good? <laughs> he, mar <laughs> he, uh, he, he married a gnome. <laughs> A garden gnome. <laughs> Where did we go wrong? Oh, Trixie. I mean, that's fine that you don't want to marry an elf, but we were hoping for maybe a hobbit. They're strong and sturdy. Mm, they're really sturdy. Or a fairy. At least they have that pixie mm -hmm. dust. Holy heck, I would even settle for a leprechaun, but not a garden well, gnome. Yeah, yeah, no, don't, don't. <laughs> Trixie, don't be insensitive. I have nothing against gnomes, oh. but a garden gnome just sits around all day and does nothing. Twinkle is a grown <laughs> elf man, and he has to make his own decisions, even if that decision is marrying a, a gnome. A garden gnome. Yeah. Even a garden yeah, gnome. Yeah, but it gets worse, though. Oh, yeah? Yeah. your child because mm -hmm. we all know how lazy those two are. Plus, we're too young to be grandparents. <laughs> Look, I just turned uh, 177, and Trixie here is only 100 and a... <clears throat> she's 28. Just, she's tw 28. Uh, I can't be a grandmother. What's it gonna call me? Grammy? Mamma? Mm -hmm. Tinsel Gran? No. Where do we go wrong, Trixie? Oh, I don't know, Tinker. I, I, I could have done war as a father. Oh, don't you say that. You're a great father. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. I mean, I'm gone most nights of the week. I mean, you, you know what? I don't, I don't even like fishing, and, and eggnog it gives me the chocolate sauce squirts. <laughs> and I actually like being home, and I, and I want to spend time with you and, and Twinkle Toes. Oh, I want you around more. I married you 145 years ago because I wanted to spend our extremely long elf lives together. And I really like you. I really like you, too. Uh. Well, that does it. I am quitting my bowling team. Uh. And no more fishing or eggnog. But it, is, is, it, is, is it okay if I still do the NFL nights? I really kind of like that. Uh, that's fine. Okay. Well... If you're home every night, we don't need Bob here all the time. What is she gonna do? I know, Trixie. I know. We'll get her a one-way ticket to Milwaukee. Oh. I, I know an elf on a shelf uh -huh. and a certain garden gnome that will need her. Uh -huh. Let's call Twinkle and tell him that <clears throat> Sugar Plum is uh -huh. coming uh -huh. to town. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dr. 
forgot yes, yourself. Yes, you're the best dog. <laughs> you're welcome. Glad to help. Never a dull moment. Dr. Gunderson? Yes, Mary? Your 2 p.m. is here. It's Rudolph, and he says it's an emergency. Apparently, they've been calling his, him names again. Ach, Lieben! Send him in. Und bring me my, my aspirin. That oh. red nose gives me such a headache. I want to be independent. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here at SonicCon. Uh, when we first begged the producers and the rest of the crew to let us perform, we knew it was going to be a bit of a long shot. Uh, but we figured we would just give it a try, especially when we heard that we would get to follow the guys from Adventures at Odyssey who were going to be here. And, um, uh, and to follow them, we, hold on, sorry. Um, can I help you? Open up. We have a report of suspicious activity. Uh, sus suspicious activity. I, oh, I don't sir, think we're, on we're only gonna tell you one more time to mm -hmm. open the door before we have to take matters into our own hands. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. That's that's fine. Here, look, no suspicious activities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna ask you not to get any closer. Sir. Yes, back up, sir, and keep Thank your you. hands where we can see them. Mm -hmm. What did I do? Oh, you tell us. Mm -hmm. I'm in the middle of trying to host a show. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> highly unlikely. Mm. Wait, why do you say that? Oh, we're asking the questions here. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, we've had a series of complaints over the last few minutes. Yeah, supposedly there is a comedy show yeah. happening on the stage right now, mm -hmm. so if you would kindly exit the theater, there won't be any more troubles. I mean, that that's us. No, sir, I, no, I don't think you heard us. There is a comedy show scheduled for right now. <laughs> yeah, that was our show. Do you understand the definition of comedy? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Professional entertainment consisting of jokes, satirical sketches intended to make an audience laugh, which, no. Webster's Dictionary, page 233. Well, that's what I thought we were doing. Mm. Really? Because this is sounding more like a eulogy. Which is a speech or piece I, of yeah, writing yeah, yeah, intended okay. I, to... I know what a eulogy is. Thank you very much. We're a comedy show with some music. Oh, we've heard the music. Yeah, that part's real good. Yeah, but the comedy... That's not real good. Have you thought about hiring a writer? Yeah. Well, we are taking applications. Okay, John Fonas, yes. But still, our, uh, our show was scheduled to perform here. Mm. Mm. So, uh, how's about this? Uh, you, uh, you tell us a joke, and if it's funny, we don't shut you down, huh? Hey. Uh, we don't really tell jokes, mm -hmm. though. We, we do stories. All right, boys, let's shut it down. No, 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 no. okay, okay, okay. Um, how about this one? All right. Uh, I'm reading a book about anti gravity, it's impossible to put down. Pack it up, boys. We're yep. done. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. Uh, give me one more try. No, sure. we do not have time. All right, um, okay, here we go. Mm -hmm. um, I used to play piano by ear, but now I use my hands like everybody else. All right, where's the broom? All right, let's sweep okay, this okay, mess okay. up, it up, boys. All right, give me one more try. <laughs> one more chance? Okay, what about a, um, what about a poem? Mm. A poem. This is supposedly <laughs> a comedy show, uh, not a poetry context, all right? Okay, well, just, just give me one try. Okay, right, ready? Right. Go for it. All right. There once was a man from Mesquite Got it. who played tuba and ate beans all week. Mm -hmm. He loved the bass clef. He sucked in his breath and blasted a hole in his teeth. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, that, this is not that kind of show. I, <laughs> we do not take kindly to that kind of humor. No. But we do feel sorry for you. We do? So we'll give you a few more minutes. Okay, well, thank you. Yeah, we'll be, we'll be out of here as soon as we can. Not, yeah. Terrible. What a sad man. I know. Right. I couldn't bring myself to well, kick him you. out. I know. It's really embarrassing. All right. Well, let's get back to, uh, let's get back to our show then.
In 1932, two sleuths, Veronica Caputo and Frankie Bevins, were hot on a case down by the docks when they were accidentally frozen in a cryogenics experiment. They thawed out 90 years later, and now they are back on 2023's hottest cases. We now find Bevins on his 17th floor apartment office, waiting for his next big lead. Bevins, goodness gracious! Any luck on finding a case out there, Veronica? Your dummy, the landlord, is breathing down our necks. It's madness out there, just madness! Oh, how I miss those days where people saw shade up and down the streets wearing their best pinstripe suits in a fedora or a derby, but no! All I see are these washed-out chumps staring at their devices like Walter Brennan, Jelly Roll Morton, or the great vaudevillian William Frawley was going to jump out of the screen and do his famous Yankee doodler for all the world to see. Yeah, these are different times, Veronica. <sighs> different times. Oh, no. Now, were you able to find the any leads, huh? Some Peggy Lee wannabe was upset because she was getting too much attention when she attended her boyfriend's sports games. I said, first of all, your problems are like dust on a heaping pile of refuse. They are too small to even care about. And second, why can't you just be thankful for what you have and stop whining about it? You seek attention like a vulture seeking an opossum who got too friendly with a truck tire. And that did not go over well. People these days are sensitive. I tell you, they're soft. I'm going into the study to lie down. I am overwhelmed by all of this. Now, there you go. Just get some rest. I'm going to find our next case. Oh. Tommy, I told you. I'll get the cash soon. My name is Dorothy. Oh. Are you Veronica and Bevins? Why, yes. Yes, we are. I'm Bevins. Veronica is out right now. How can I help you, Mrs... Miss oh. Dorothy Ruth O'Malley, but you can call me Doc. You have my attention. My client, Maximilian Barbier, has gone missing. I last saw him three days ago. I'm promoting his fashion show Saturday. We have thousands coming, not to mention all the top magazines. You see, he's a French prodigy that left under the scene out of nowhere, but he's so hot right is now. Is that so? And the phone keeps ringing with models, promoters, and organizers looking for him in their wardrobe for the show. Ma'am, we solve moiters, not missing persons cases. I'll pay you $10,000 if you find him. When did you last see him? He sent me a message earlier today that just said, Foe, hmm. the gala is in two days. Please hurry. Veronica and Bevins raced down to Hout Latte Lounge, a local hangout for fashionistas and the like. They found a small table in the back where they sit, investigating this missing person. What do you want? And a good morning to you, too. This one's got an attitude. Yeah, we did not get a menu. This isn't that kind of place. We only have regulars. And you ain't a regular. My blood, it's beginning to boil, Bevins. She better back off before I brandish a broken bar stool at this bistro and bash in this steady, beauty. Steady, Veronica, steady. Calm yourself. If you're ah. not placing an order, please promptly part from my tables and go progress your path out of our pleasant coffee shop. Don't you alliteratively lash out at me. We are here to find a missing person. Well, he ain't here, whoever he is. Now, are you going to order? Yeah, I'll have coffee, black. Give me a creamy caramel cappuccino and hold the sass. Mm. I'll be back. What kind of nerve does this woman possess? I've never felt so attacked or abused by someone in the waitstaff industry. Your job is to get coffee. It's not to humiliate those who are paying your bills. We have failed as a society. Just dreadful, I tell mm. you. She is hiding something. She is about to be hiding my 1931 Cuban heeled Oxfords with a sun. Hey, hey, a hey, creamy hey, hey. caramel cappuccino and a black coffee in a to-go cup. Now. How's about you take your coffee and scram? Now, see, we are looking for a missing person who I think you know about. How's about you tell us what you know, and then we'll be out of your hair. You cops? Let's just say, if we don't find him, they will be in here next. And when they come asking questions, I'll tell them you've got answers. What do you want? She's getting soft, Bevins. You've melted her into liquid. Yeah, I know. Maximilian Bev... Bavi... Ma Maximilian, you heard of him? Maybe. Answer all inquiries, or do we need to call the fuzz on you in your pretentious coffee shop? Yeah. Fine. All the fashion designers come through here. Luca Devereaux, Fabienne Monroe, Daphne de la Mode, Odette Arlochon. What about Maximilian? And Barbier. Ah. I saw him this morning. Barbier. He is usually pretty cranky, but was a little more than usual. Any ideas where he might be? Besides his office, the only other place you'll find fashion designers is at the fashion library, the Avant Gardens. Ah. We'll try our luck there. Hey, why the chip on your shoulder pad, sugar? You've got everything working for you, but the attitude, whatever your name is. Cordelia. The name's Cordelia. I came here to be a designer myself, but no one will give me a chance. Dealing with them all day and this care and getting all no's will make you a little jaded, I guess. I like your toughness, gal. Let us gaze upon your creations. Here's my recent collection. Mm. I call it Fall 
easy 40s. It's fabulous. What a visual breath of fresh air. This beats that heap of filth I have to endure walking down the boulevard. Stay tough. You'll make it, kid. Thanks. I get off work in two minutes. I'll take you down to the Avant Gardens Library. Our two sleuths and their new companion, Cordelia, race down to the Avant Gardens Library, where they scour through the joint, but find no signs of their missing man. It's the end of the road, Bevins. We've looked everywhere. No sign of him. It does seem that the trail has gone cold. The fashion show is tomorrow, and it might go on without a star. <laughs> Wait. I hear something. Hear yeah, what? There are muffled moans of a melancholy man murmured in the neighboring nook. <laughs> yes. He's coming from behind these books. Maybe there's a... <gasps> It's a secret passage. Don't say. And there's a sad man. <laughs> what are you doing here? Get out. Listen here, Dopey. I've had about enough of this attitude from you and the like. Are you the Maximilian Bavier? <laughs> I was afraid so. There was a woman who has been looking for you, you puddle of a man. Now where I come from, a man doesn't abandon his obligations. You need to shape up, button up those trousers and get back to the real world, buster. I can't. You have a show in less than two days. Tell them I'm sick. No that I've been taken hostage. Better yet, I've died. Yes, tell them I had a long but epic death, that I sacrificed myself to shield a group of children from a sudden avalanche during a mountain expedition, I don't know. No, 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 here we go. I was protecting endangered wildlife. You're Maximilian Bav... You're Maximilian, get out there and show some clothes. I'm a fraud and they know it. Snap out of it, kid, you're talking crazy. Put that lump back on your shoulders and present those garments like a man. I'm not him. I'm not Maximilian. We've got the wrong guy. No, you've got the right guy. I'm just not him. My real name is Petey. Petey Paulson. I'm such a failure. Oh, well, that's, that's fine. Uh, the great Marion Morrison went by John Wayne. Annie Oakley was Phoebe Ann Moses, right? Those designs for tomorrow's show aren't really mine. They were all created by Ensemble Engine. You must be new. It's an AI fashion generator that I created. Mm. I'm not from France or even Europe. I'm from Silicon Valley. I created the AI app for my PhD program with another classmate, but he said he was going to expose me if I didn't tell the truth that I'm not Maximilian Bavier. <laughs> Oh, I'm, th I'm thankful my mother isn't around to see this failure of a man. I'm just going to call up a jet and fly back to my $5 million mansion back on the coast. Computer-generated fashion. No wonder they all look like Gene Autry's horse champion laid a pile of... Hey, Veronica, Veronica. Sorry. So, you're a fake, you're a fraud. I'm not a real fashion designer, just a multi-billionaire tech mogul loser. <laughs> what a sad man. Maximilian, I thought I would find you here. Where's my designs? You mean Petey Paulson? What are you talking about? It's a long story, Dot, but you're out a designer. I guess I'll just go back to managing my software companies and cashing in on app that charges handling fees. <laughs> hey, Carl, will you bring the jet around? Wait, you can't leave. We have a show tomorrow. I have promoters, models, celebrities. I need outfits. There is so little time, I just can't cancel. What are we going to do? What do you think about this? It's called Fall in the 40s. I love it, but whose is it? Meet Cordelia, your new lead designer. It's perfect. Where are the pieces? I only have designs. They haven't been produced yet. Rats! We have 24 hours. This won't work. We have to hire a horde of seamstresses to get this done in time. I don't have that kind of money. It's fine. What do you want? Seven million dollars? I'll send you even ten. I just Venmoed it into your bank account. Actually, I just hacked your checking account. It's in there. Okay, bye. <sighs> Let's put on a show. Come on, Cordelia. Well, it looks like our work here is done. Hurrah! We've saved the day once again. Petey, tell me more about this five million dollar home. That'll do it for this episode of Veronica and Bevins. Come back next week when our sleuth solved the case of the missing golden vacuum at the Housekeeping Olympics. Well, fall is the season for love. The leaves are falling, couples are holding hands and sharing apple cider. 
But do you find yourself lonely again this year? Why are all of my friends out with their significant others while I'm still here alone? When is it going to be my turn to have a boyfriend and even a husband? Do you know what you need? What? PDA. Excuse me, what? PDA. Prudence Dating Advisor. Hi there, Prudence here. Stop sitting around whining and complaining about not having a boyfriend and find a job or something. But... <laughs> I really want a person to share my life with. That'll get real old. Yeah, it's all fun and games lying in bed and looking at your man sleeping on a pillow next to you, but after two months of that drape-sucking snoring, you'll want to put that pillow over his face and then you have a real problem. You don't know how good you've got it now. But I want to find someone, a good man. Oh, a good one, huh? Is that why you go gallivanting around with your entire stomach hanging out? You're going to get it sunburnt and it'll get all droopy and everyone will think you're wearing a worn-out leather fanny pack that you found in your closet from 1993. And then you think that's bad. There's nothing compared to months of recovery from hip replacements caused by all that dancing you're doing in front of your phone at the tickety talks. You know the government is watching you every time you post something on there. I heard it on the 6 o'clock news. No, no, no man is going to watch some woman being watched by the NSA all day. <clears throat> um, but what about finding a boyfriend? If you want to find a boyfriend, you need to shape up. Quit buying some 47-year-old mother of fives hand me down to the Goodwill. Get a job and buy some real clothes. And those glasses are as big as your face. They look like two clear plastic plates from a cheap wedding reception that have been glued together and put on your nose. Get some real glasses or even better card books. Is that going to help me find a good man? Then another thing. Good luck finding a good man. There are about 11 of them in the world and none live in this city. Get a dog. They're loyal, snore less, and will clean your plate after every meal. So, if this sounds like you... All I want is a ring by spring. Then call Prudence Dating Advisor. Why don't you find a real house by spring and stop living with five good-for-nothing roommates? This ad was paid for by PDA and DOG, the Dog Owners Guild. Batteries not included. Your parents put it together. Chess is the money one in four Brazilian. Ken and Barbie each sold separately. Okay, I have waded through the crocodile-infested swamp, hugged the lion, and crawled through the scorpion's cave. Good. Do you see the lair in front of yeah, you? I do. It's about 200 meters away. That's where they are about to administer the virus that will wipe out all of our defense systems. They are uploading it right now, so you have 23 minutes to stop it. Okay, there's just a field of sand in front of me. Is it safe to move forward? Yes, <laughs> just... <laughs> you sure? Yes, just make... Okay, okay. Okay, uh, well, I'm, I'm moving forward. <laughs> and Hoyt, can you hear me? You can move forward, just take the route to the left because there's a pool of quicksand right in front of you. Okay, I uh, feel your message has come in too late. I am currently sinking into the sand and have also dropped my walkie-talkie. Hoyt, one of our best agents is nearby. No. I'm sending them right over. Whatever you do, don't panic and stay calm. <laughs> Okay, I spent two years posing as a general in North Korea. Don't ask. I swam 40 miles, surrounded by great white sharks in South Africa, and I crawled through Snake Island on my belly, like a snake. I can stay calm in quicksand. Also, my walkie-talkie is sinking out of reach. All right, then. Our best agent is walking up now. Uh, well, 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 Cricket. Look who got themselves in another little pickle. Not you again. And it's not Cricket, it's Agent Hoyt, James C. Hoyt. That is not how I would greet someone who was going to get me out of a pool of sandy water, Cricket. It's not just a pool of sandy water, it is quicksand. There is a big difference. Oh, I know you're in a tight spot right now. No pun intended. <laughs> but let's see what we can do to get you out. Thank you. Just get me out and we will. I will be on our way. First things first. What's the password? Oh, for heaven's sake, I'm not going to do this password thing with you again. Oh, uh-oh, you're sinking. 
You know the most important thing when you're in quicksand? Mm -hmm. Yes, it's to stay calm. That's right. Mm -hmm. I need you to stay calm so we can get you out of this little pickle before you disappear, Anna. Yes, yes, I do not know the password. Oh, I don't need a password. That was just a little joke. Wow, someone has lost their sense of humor these days. I am just high in quicksand and a clock is ticking on a virus that will destroy all the entire defense system network. I do not really have time for a joking mood. Every time you find some humor in a difficult situation, you win. You're quoting Shakespeare? No, my Aunt Ruby. No. Okay, so I'm going to reach out my hand and you just grab and I'll pull you up. Are you sure you can? Oh, we're a very strong people where I come from. Not those real types like you. Now quit stalling and grab my hand. I can't reach it. Here, let me just... Oh, be careful. One more and... Mm -hmm. Oh, there it is. Oh, well, uh oh. It seems we're both in a little pickle right now. I cannot believe this. Kay even called you one of his best agents. <gasps> Did he really say that? Mm -hmm. Well, Kay is just the sweetest, isn't he? Oh, he's something. He is something. Mm -hmm. Now, what are we going to do? Oh, I don't know. I've never actually been in danger myself. But I'm pretty sure we just need to stay calm. Yep. We just need to stay calm. Mm -hmm. Stay calm. Stay. We're going to die. This is how it ends. I thought I would die at the ripe old age of 92, sitting on my front porch covered in a blanket crocheted by Aunt Ruby. Stop <laughs> moving. But instead, my eternal rest will now be in a bed of sand. Three million years from now, some archaeologist is going to find my body in one of those amber rocks like a mosquito in Jurassic Park. Stop moving. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Calm down, woman. Don't call me woman. <laughs> Sorry, that was insensitive. But calm down, please. Oh. You can breathe. The sound is at your waist. It is nowhere near your chest like me. You're okay. Well, I'm okay. Yes, you are. I'm breathe. okay. Nice and slow. Breathe. <sighs> wow. Did we just fall in love? No. No! Oh, my goodness, no! Oh, Cricket, the number one thing to do when you're in quick stand is just stay calm. I am not... <sighs> what is that? Oh, it's my phone. Oh, it's my mom. She's FaceTiming. Your mother's FaceTiming you? <gasps> oh, hi there, Ma. Hey, sweetheart, what you doing? Oh, nothing really, just stuck at work. Oh, I'm so sorry to bother you at work. I'll just let you go. Oh, no, I have time. What are you doing? Your dad and I were wondering when you're going to be in for Christmas. Oh, I'm flying into Minneapolis, St. Paul on the 20th. Would you be able to pick me up? If not, I can just Uber. You will not Uber. Oh. Those things are dangerous, you know. You got to be careful when you get in a car with a stranger. Oh, ma, it's fine. Your father will be there to pick you up. Just let us know what time? Who's that behind you? Is that your boyfriend? Ma, no, that's embarrassing. He's just a guy I work with. Hi there, uh, how are uh, you? Hello, I'm fine, just fine, fine. Thank how you. long have you worked at the Banana Republic? Excuse what? me, <laughs> what? Ma, you don't have to use the cold word, it's fine. Everyone here knows who I work for. We're just in a little pickle right now. Oh no, and you don't even like pickles. I know. It's good to meet yep, you. Yes, yes, yes. Pleased to make your acquaintance, too. Yes. What, honey? Okay, I'm coming. Sorry, your dad is calling. We're going to go play bridge with the Andersons. Ooh. Okay, I will see you in a few weeks. And you could bring your boyfriend, too. Ma, he's not my boyfriend. Are you? No! Okay, not yet, Mom. Okay, love, love you. Bye. Bye. Sorry, that was so embarrassing. <laughs> you wouldn't want to go to Christmas with my family, would you? No, no, no. Can we get back to the issue at hand here? Okay. I just texted Kay, and he said that two other agents are on the way. Good. This heat is just brutal, you know? Well, I, mean, I, I feel okay. I tapped a cactus for water and used the pulp as sunscreen. Oh, did your training cover that? No, I saw it on the Discovery Channel, Bear Grylls. A real British hero. No offense. Thank goodness. Here come the other agents. Well, well, well. What do we have here? Oh, what have you gotten yourself into? What rock are they finding these agents under? Oh, Cricket, that's not nice. 
Well, if you're going to be like that. We are just trying to help. Oh, don't worry about him. He's a little cranky. I have been stuck in quicksand next to her for a while. So, I'd be lying if I didn't say I wasn't jealous. <laughs> if I was sitting a spell with her, I'd be having more fun than a lost dog at a meat oh. market. <laughs> Why aren't you that sweet ass? That's just the truth. Now, let me just tie this rope to a tree stump, and I'll toss it to you to pull you out. Oh, no worries. I already tied one up. It's right behind you. Darned if it ain't. Ellie Mae, why don't you toss that right in there? Sure thing. Here it comes. So how did you know to tie a rope to the tree stump? Well, it was in our measure brief. I didn't see it. It was in the fine print. You read the fine print before you clicked submit, didn't you? I, um, I, I always... Read the <clears throat> well, I declare. <laughs> Don't that beat everything. Good gracious, man. How are you even an agent if you don't read the fine print? <laughs> you never know what you're signing up for. Oh, bless your heart. <laughs> That's just the scariest thing I ever like heard. I, I have conducted, I have conducted covert surveillance, infiltrated secure facilities, and engaged in high-stakes espionage operations. I know what I am doing. And you're a lucky man that we're around, or you would be gasping for air with a vulture tying a napkin around his neck with a knife and a fork and wing. Where in tar nation are they getting agents from these days? Uh, I'm also ashamed to be associated with some of these people. Oh, well, he tries real hard, don't you, Cricket? Uh. Oh, this is Cricket? Makes yes, sense yes, now. Oh, uh, 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 like, hey, 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 I'm sorry. Oh. Please, just throw me the rope, please. I, I have less than four <laughs> minutes to complete my mission. The whole virus thing? Yes. Yeah, we already did it. You, you already completed my mission. Well, you guys were just sitting around. Someone had to do it. So, Cricket, mm -hmm. now that the mission's over, you want to go on a date and get to know each other? Absolutely not. Well, thanks again. We are the Main Street Music Show here at Sonicon in Lynchburg, Virginia. Uh, this area has a very rich history, especially when it, com especially when it comes to Civil War history. Uh, Civil War ended really just east of here at Appomattox Courthouse, and uh, over three million soldiers fought, many between the ages of 18 to 25. And uh, while they fought a great war, they also had many battles at home. My dearest Annabelle, it is with great excitement and also longing that I pen this correspondence to you. This day has been full of drill, drill, and more drill. We are learning how to march in line and carry our muskets and bayonets. I have made some new acquaintances. I've been playing chess with a chap from out west named Ernst. I'm, I'm pretty tired, but I never tired, too tired, to write to my sweet, sweet Annabelle. Oh, how I have missed your sweet smile and your soft hands. But don't you worry. This war will soon be over as soon as it has begun, and then I will be back with my love, and we finally can wed. I put pen aside, for tomorrow we are on the march. Forever yours, Albert. My sweet Albert, you are so greatly missed by me and so many others. Almost all the boys have left since you departed. The only one left is our neighbor, Frank Haskins. Oh, how I wish that we were able to wed before you left for war. However, it is your duty. I am mighty lonely here without you. Desperately missing you, Annabelle. My loveliest Annabelle, 
Oh, how wonderful it was to read your letter today. Yes, Frank, my dear old friend. We uh, used to be rivals in high school, <laughs> but we have, we've grown past such those silly days of school. Yeah. Anyway, we marched 20 miles today through the densest mud you have ever laid eyes on. <laughs> I even lost one of my boots. <laughs> my, my chess friend, Ernst, has, uh, has come down with a pretty bad cough. The doc thinks it might be typhoid. But I mustn't bog you down with such unpleasantries. <laughs> I, I need to go eat my mess of beans and get some rest. We march on tomorrow. I miss thee more with every sleep, but every night I lay my head on the ground is one night closer to being with you. Love always, Albert. Dear Albert, I cannot fathom what you must be going through in your journeys. Things here have become oh so treacherous. We have been losing people here too. You know Charles, our butler. Well, he has gone to work for the Willards just up the road. So we labor all day brewing our own tea and setting our own tables. Thank goodness the cook Ida is still here. What punishing times we live in. Frank Haskins has just been a blessing by bringing over fresh strawberries each day. My candle is fading, so I must go. Yours, Annabelle. My dearest Annabelle, the thought of you lifting even a delicate and soft finger makes me want to win this war as soon as we can so that we might be reunited. Unfortunately, the boys will have to fight without me for a few days. Yesterday, we were ambushed by the enemy, and I took a mini ball through the left leg and the right arm, so I'm riding with my left hand. I also haven't had more than a few beans each day for the past week. But do not worry for me, my love, for you will heal my wounds quickly. And we will be together. With warmest regards, Albert. Albert, I too have felt the pain of this great war. Without Charles here, I had to fetch my own raisins from the kitchen, and I stubbed the big toe on my left foot. The pain was absolutely dreadful. I had to lie on the sofa for hours. Thankfully, the neighbor, Frank Haskins, brought over some ice and a slice of his mother's strawberry pie each day this week. Frank held the ice to my toe while I ate my slice of pie. I think I will recover in time. Annabelle. Sweet Annabelle, my arm is healing nicely. However, I smell that my leg has had some setbacks. I tried to make the field last week, and it was struck again in the same place. The doc says there could be an infection. I'm glad that our dear friend Frank is there to help you. I owe him such a debt of gratitude when I return. Only yours, Albert. My dear friend, that is dreadful to hear about your leg. My legs have been in pain all week because we danced all weekend at the Willard's barbecue. Frank is so light on his feet, I just couldn't keep up. Your friend, Annabelle. Annabelle, I'm sorry. You were dancing with Frank all weekend? I do, I do, I do, I do appreciate his help, but I, I should be home soon. My, my leg, though, has turned a shade of green that can only be described as mildly bioluminescent. I, I do not even know what that means. Your fiance, Albert. Annabelle? Uh, are, are you still there, Annabelle? To whom it may concern. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Frank and I were visiting his family on the coast. It was just dreadfully cold out there. Worst vacation ever. But Frank kept me warm. K okay, bye. Annabelle. Excuse me, Annabelle. Um, could you, could you please put Frank on the letter for a moment? I, I would very much, very much like to correspond with him. Albert. Dear Albert, this is Frank. What's up? Thanks, Frank. Dear Frank, why are you moving in on my girl? You, you know we were engaged before I left for war, and now I hear you were taking her to visit your family. 
Also, why, why are you not fighting? Albert. Dear Albert, I have asthma. Sincerely, Frank. <laughs> Dear Frank, I have a glowing leg that smells like cabbage from a rotten corned beef sandwich, and yet I still made three runs at the enemy yesterday. You know what? I do not need this. Sincerely, yours, Albert. Dear Albert, fine, Frank. Dear Frank, fine, Albert. Dear Albert, fine, Frank. Dear Frank, whatever, Albert. Dearest y'all, come on, Frank, let's get off this letter. You can take me to brunch at the Willoughby's. Fare thee well, Annabelle. Dear Annabelle, he started it. No cap, Frank. Dear Annabelle, it is with a heavy heart that I accept the termination of our engagement. Please tell your father that I do apologize for not speaking with him first. I know that you will be in good hands with Frank. I will be okay as well. I have taken yet another mini ball, but ended up in a hospital where I met a nurse who I will be asking for her hand in marriage. Her name is Bella Ann. She is a wonderful person, similar to you, except younger and much prettier, with a sweeter smile and softer hands. Lost to you forever, Albert. Dear Albert, excuse me? Annabelle. going to do it for our live episode of the Main Street Music Show here at Sonicon in Lynchburg, Virginia. The Main Street players, Jamie Cloutier, Daniel Cross, featuring Kara O'Brien and Sam Van Fossen. Our great band, Roundabout, with Lachlan King on the fiddle, Lucas Mays, banjo and guitar, and Liliana Yates on the bass. And working sound effects behind us is Jacob Hodges, Natalie Dobler, and Alex Schultz. We want to thank everybody here at SonicCon, Chris Nelson, Trinity Ward, our stage manager, Paige Wilson, sound engineer, Greg Vinson, and our videographer, Bill Dewhurst. Our show was written by Jay Corton, and the Main Street Music Show is a Morari production. For more information, go to uh, MainStreetMusicShow.com. Dot com. And until next time, thank you so much for being here, and so long, everybody. Radio on, and listen to the music in the air. Turn your radio on, and your glory share. Turn your lights down low, and listen to the master's radio. Get in touch with God. Turn your radio on.